Let's start them with a with a class session today. And uh, I don't know if everybody did the homework already, but that's fine because I guess you have time. I'm not sure. I don't have it in the top of my head right now, but anyways, make sure you do homework on the appropriate time because if you don't do it, then you're gonna be behind. So make sure to do that. Now, last week we talked about the uh, the rules. We talked about the rules. We saw the uh, homophones, the homograph. We also saw the uh, consonant blend, consonant D graph. And we went to the rules of pronunciation with a, with the short vowel rules, the long vowel rules, number one, number two, and we also saw the vowel the graph. And uh, what we are going to do is we are going to, every week, we are going to go back on the meetings. Like, for example, I gave you the uh, questionnaire for uh, the lesson or unit number one and two, uh, very easy, only six questions and you were supposed to, to fill up the questions and upload the homework. Now, what we are going to do is that we are going to talk about that for 30 minutes around that. And I'm going to ask you a few questions to see if you did homework or if you are reading or not, you know. So um, participation is important. <laughs> okay, now we had a, we had a, a, a few questions Although you, although you don't see me, I'm here, I'm here. So the, the, I don't know, if you think about how people learn, the book, the questionnaire had a question like that and he asked, how, what was the way that people learn better? Like some people learn better in a way. What was that way that the book said? Like, oh, Caesar, you have your hands up? Yes, teacher, as I was able to read and to, and to find the book, the book says most, most people learn things better through the eye than through the ear. Okay. Uh, that was all, teacher. Yeah, very good. That's <laughs> fine. That's nice. I see Raphael also wants to say something. The, the people more uh, by visual uh, because can uh, get more information and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Right. Right, that's true, that's true. Uh, yeah. Excuse, excuse me, teacher. Yes. Excuse me, teacher. And that's true, that's true, that's true. Because as you can see, when we are learning something, first of all, we have to watch it. And then mm -hmm. we, we hate it. Or listen it. You know, teacher, what I mean. Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. Uh, uh, although there are people that have different ways of learning, you know, it's easier when you see it. And if you can see it and you can listen to it, the combination of it is better. But there are people that if they see it, they don't learn. And uh, yeah, that's true. For example, look, in languages, it's the same. Like, do, you, you can do it in your house with anyone who doesn't know wing. You can tell the person like, uh, for example, come here. Like you say, come here, and you do that. Like, come here. People will understand what you're saying because they're seeing, although they don't understand what you're saying, they're seeing and they understand what you're doing, you know? Like, if you say, don't do that, like, no, don't do that. People will understand that you're saying no, like, no. So basically, in, yeah, you should. Yeah, you should. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> in languages, when you, are, when you are teaching or when you're speaking, you have to use signs. Not only signs, because you can have the object in your hands. You can tell the person, I don't like this spoon. The person, <laughs> might not understand that yeah. they know, but the person knows that you're talking about spoon and they know that a spoon is a cuchara in Spanish, right? 
So you don't need the translation, people can see it. So that's the way that people learn, whatever they, for example, I, I will give you a, a clear example. Look, I know that you guys are not blind, right? That you can see, uh, but if you have an accident or you don't need to have an accident, you can cover your eyes and you can walk around your whole house, around the whole house, and you know where everything is. It's because when you see it, yeah. it stays in your brain. That's the point. You learn it. You learn it. Okay. It is the same way you are talking with American people, and he doesn't know how to speak how to speak Spanish, but you don't know how to speak English. But if you if you do a, a sign, and then he can understand you. Yeah, you know right. what I mean, teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what you're saying. Like you are a friend of mine. Her name was Kay. She used, she used to say, you know what I'm saying? You know? <laughs> All right, so let's continue here. Uh, there, there, was, uh, there was a question, and this is something I have to explain to you. I'm going to go to the board because he said, how many fundamental vowels we have in English? Did you see that, Jennifer, how many fundamental vowels we have in English? I will be asking questions, guys, to your names from now on. So imagine that this is a class, this is a normal class, and I'm gonna be asking questions from things that I have given you already. What about you, Hennessy's? Are you there? Because maybe your name is there, but you're not there. Oh, I guess you guys cannot listen to me. I see. All right. Uh, hold on. You know, from now on, I'm going to make a list of the people that really participate. For example, Caesar, uh, Francis Fell, um, Ivana talks here, uh, Raphael. But there are people in the group that I haven't heard them. For example, Joan de la Cruz, uh, Genesis. Jose, are you there? Jose Solarin? I don't know if you can listen to me, Caesar. Yes, teacher. I can listen to you. I can listen to you. I'm I listening see. to you in this one. I see, I see, I see. So basically, you guys are the only people in the class. The other ones are just there, and we don't know where they are. All right, so hold on. Uh, so, phonetics. Only Caesar and uh, what was oh, Raphael? Yeah, Raphael is there. Good. So I just made a little list here. Uh, okay. So here we go. This is what I wanted to explain in English. Oops, where is the whiteboard? Okay, so in English, we have, okay, hold on. Let me, let me, let me check that. We have, uh, okay, here is text. We add the text. So in English, we have two types of vowels. Let's move this, let's move it. Oops, I don't want to move. So in English, we have two types of vowels and the vowels we have are, uh, let's call it A. A is the first type and the first type is regular. Regular vowels. And the regular vowels are 
the ones we learned in the last week? A, E, I, O, U. So those are the five regular vowels. And then we have, we have more uh, fundamental vowels. There are more than five, but this time we're going to see the five principal ones. So we say B and B are the fundamental vowels. And these five fundamental vowels, you saw it in the questionnaire that um, I left on the platform. And these are uh, E, A, A. I don't know how to get the A in there, that sign. Uh, this is not the correct one, okay? Is the, the A that you see on, on, when you're writing, for example, on Word, that's the A that I'm looking for, not that one. So, so you know, I'm making this comment just to let you know that that's not the correct one. Is because here I can I can have the correct A there. So make sure you know. And we have O and we have U. So these are the five fundamental vowels. This is E A A O U. Remember, this is not the correct. Is the regular minimum? Um, I would say minimal letter, I'm crazy. Small letter, small letter uh, that you normally write. Now, what is the difference, the difference between regular vowels and fundamental vowels? Well, the difference is that the regular vowels, you use them to create words. There are letters, right? But the fundamental vowels, there are sounds, so you don't write, you don't create words within, you produce words, you produce sounds, right? So that's the difference. One are letters and the other ones are sounds. That's the biggest difference. So whenever you see one of these, that's not a letter, that's, that's the representation of a sound. And um, we saw that the, the five fundamental vowels are organized in a little chart. I don't know if you saw the chart. Uh, if you didn't see it, let me see if I can. Let me see if I can. Uh, I'm going to use the pen, don't, the pencil, I guess I, I'll use this one. Now, don't make fun of me because I cannot control this in here. I would try to do the chart, but it's not going to be perfect. So. So, so you guys know, okay. So you see, you see, I'm trying to do the chart that you have on your material. This is like the chart. Okay, let me go down a little bit that you have in there. And you have this and you have this and, and, and then you had another one like that, sorry. And you had another one like that. That's the type of the chart that you saw on, in the book. Now, if you notice in here, you, you place the vowels, but you don't place it whatever you want. You place it in a specific uh, place, sorry. Uh, for example, let me see if I, can, if I can add, no. Okay, I'm going to use the pen, sorry. So here, um, you have this one. You have E in here, right? You have E. Then you continue here with A. I'm sorry about that. I'm nervous, so I cannot handle this. And then we have the A. The A that I told you is like that. Look, this is the real A. <laughs> It's, it doesn't look like that, but you guys know what I'm talking about because you already have it on your, you have it on, on, the, uh, on the book, so you have an idea of what I'm saying. And we have this one here and, and, and this one here. That's it. UW that you say who? Oh, this, that, this telephone is crazy. Hold on. 
is recognizing my voice. And we have the O, right? So there you go. Ooh, I made it. Uh, okay, so basically, this is the chart. Now, there is a reason why the, this is organized this way. All this here, the chart, is the representation of the throat. This part is the throat, right? And depending on the origin of the sound, then we organize the vowels like that. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Here we have the five vowels. We have E, A, A, O, and U. Do you guys see, uh, did you see how you um, classify the five fundamental vowels? Did you see there how you classify them? Because they have a classification. They're separated into different parts. Did any one of you um, had the chance to, to read it? Jose, do you want to say something? Yes. Excuse me, teacher. Can you repeat the, the, the question, please, again? Yes, the question is, look, here you have the five fundamental vowels, right? On the chart, on the chart. And, uh, Hold on. If you guys don't mute it, you won't be able to listen to me. Uh, okay, so you have the five fundamental vowels. How are the five fundamental vowels divided? What is the division? That's the question. Caesar, you know? Yeah, teacher, as I can see here, they are divided in five parts. In five? Two in the left, in five parts. Two okay. in the left side, two in the right side, and one in the middle. Okay. But they have, they have a name. They have a name. Let me tell you. You guys didn't read that. It is very important that you guys start reading the whole chapter. Don't only look for the answer, you have to read. Uh, let me show you. Hold on. Okay, I'll get you, I'll get you on mute. So hold on. Uh, okay, now the five fundamental vowels are divided and they're divided into three parts, right? Uh, you said Caesar, you have two on the left you have two on the right, and you, want, and you have one down in the middle. So they're divided into three different parts on the chart. Now, this is one part, this is another part, and this is another part. How do you call these vowels? You call them back, back vowels. These are the opposite. These are the front. This pen is, is going to kill me. These are the front vowels. And this here is the middle. Oh, this is difficult writing with this, guys. Middle. So this is the middle. So this is the division of the five fundamental vowels. Two of them are front vowels, two of them are back vowels, and one is the middle vowel. Now, why do you call it like that? It's because uh, of the position of the tongue and the origin of the sound. Uh, for, I'm going to give you only one example for each 
so you can have a clear idea of what I'm talking about. I'm going to delete something here. Okay, let me see. I don't know where the eraser here is, but anyways, uh, I'll try to do that. Give me a second here. I don't know. I don't know where the eraser is. Oh, here it is. Jesus, it was. Okay, I'm going to erase this so I can show you why we call them front and why we call them back. Now, I'm going to give you only one word, right? One word, one word for this, one word for this, one for this one. If you have the book, you can go to your book and you will see that these are the same words. Sorry, that, that one is day. Okay, let me raise that. that. That doesn't look good. Day, right? Let's try to do it this way. Here. Okay, good. And this one, we're gonna use this word to describe it. Far. Now, um, if you say the word, uh, let's use this one. If you say C, if you pronounce C, you will notice that the R, that the production of the sound and the ending of the sound is in the front of your mouth, in the front of your teeth. When you say C, right, you're blowing out because the production of the sound is just right there, so you blow out, right? So that's why we call, we say that this is a front vowel because the, the origin and the ending of the sound is in the front. So when you say C, that's, that's when you can feel uh, the origin of it. Now, what about day? When you say day, A, the final sound, day, you notice that is there, right? Is in the front of your teeth. It's not as much in the front as in C, but when you say day, you can feel it there. That's why right. you say that the two of them are front vowels, although one is more in the front than the other, right? C is, is stronger than day when we're talking about the position of, of the mouth. That's, that's why you would call them front vowels. Now we go to the middle vowel, the central vowel, the vowel in the center. And if you pronounce the word far, you will notice that you have to open your mouth. Look, far, ah, ah, far, right? If, when you say the sound, you will notice that you have to make a hole in your tongue and then you produce the sound for that vowel. So you say far. And as you see here, as you see here on the chart, right? You can see this is like the middle of your, of your throat. Like the tongue is down here and you make a hole in it. That's the point. Then finally, we have the, um, the, the back vowels. And the back vowels, they're called like that because the origin and the sound of the sound and the ending of the sound is normally in the back of the throat, just right there on the back. If you say two, like two, you will notice that you have to force your chest like from the inside. You have to force yourself for you to produce that sound. Let me see. I thought someone was writing. Yeah, hold on. Okay, uh, Ivana says she doesn't listen. I know, Ivana, Melina listens, Ivana, Sally, Entra, okay, good. I thought someone was just trying to tell me something. Anyways, I was here on, on the back of the house and we are here on two. When you say two, if you pronounce two, you will see that you will force your throat because the sound 
is coming from the back, way the back of the throat. Then we have O, oh, and you say go. When you say you see, you, you're taking air from the inside, from the back, so you can produce the sound. And that's the reason why um, they're, they're divided into three parts, and they call front, back, and central. And remember the, um, I'm sorry, that the difference, the biggest difference between the regular vowels and the fundamental vowels is that regular vowels are letters. You create words with them. You write words with them. But with the fundamental vowels, you don't write. You only produce the sounds. Now, let me stop here and see if you have any questions about, the, about this so far. Do you guys have any questions before I continue? I don't know if you guys have problems with the audio. That's what I think. Teacher, you can go on. You can go. You can continue. Yeah, but this is very strange. It, it feels that I feel like I'm 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 here alone. Only you. Uh, what I can do. What I can do is that I can I can record the sessions and we don't have any meetings. I can do this video alone and upload it to the upload it to the um, the platform so you you guys can see it, watch it, and then you do your homework. And if you have any questions, you go back to the video, and that will be easier for me. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to finish the meeting because I feel alone in here. Although we have 12 people, I'm going to finish. I will upload the video and I will leave you, uh, leave you an assignment so you can do it. And I will see you guys later. Okay, okay, t-shirt. All right. Okay, t-shirt, no problem, no problem.